First of all, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Jeremy Riffle. I'm the superintendent of Triton School Corporation. Um, proud to live in this community. Proud to have my kids um, attend Triton School Thanks. Corporation. Uh, my wife is a graduate of Triton, 1998. Um, went to Bethel College, married her, and never thought I would end up in Etna Green, Indiana, but you know what? Here we are, right? And I love this place. Um, and uh, I love our community, I love our kids, um, and hopefully that's evident whether um, yeah, whatever they say. So, um, that being said, just to open up, um, our, our board um, several years ago and our uh, administrative team, staff members, parents, um, were all part of a strategic planning committee meeting. Um, and we did that with Dr. Benjamin, who talks about quality school models. And what we came up with is some core values, and I shared them today simply because we want to make sure that we align with those core values when we have conversations like this and we try to make decisions for the school corporation. Um, and so the core values that I really feel like today that we're meeting, um, first of all, the high expectation piece, okay? You guys have high expectations for your community, you have high expectations for your school corporation, um, and we share that with you. And the second one is social responsibility, and that's just us having this conversation. Quite frankly, I think all of you are aware this conversation would not have to be had, right? But we owe it to the patrons of our community to continue to communicate and say, what do we feel is best? Right? Um, the next one right here is just uh, evidence-based evidence decision making. We've put a lot of the information together to say, um, is this a sustainable um, building for our future? All right? And our board has deemed the fact that we're going to open this up and talk about RFPs. Um, so we'll talk about a lot of those things as we go on today. Um, I'll be more than happy to take questions at the end. Um, we do have a, a Bourbon League basketball game here at 7, um, but it's not going to take that long. But uh, I did unlock all the little nooks and crannies here if you want to take a peek afterwards. Um, if anybody wants to take a tour of the new activity center, I'll be more than happy to meet you over there and take you a quick tour of that as well. So um, we want you to leave feeling like you were heard, um, feeling like uh, you know what's going on in our corporation. I'll be, be glad to answer any of those tough questions that you have um, tonight. Um, so as we begin, um, I want to introduce a few people just so you kind of know who you're talking to or who um, is going to be uh, deemed with making these decisions. Um, in front of you, we have Mr. McIntyre, who's the athletic director. Next to him, we have Todd Zeiger, um, who's with the Indiana Landmarks. Um, so those are the guys that are sitting up front. Tim Shelley is back here. He's our school attorney. Um, and we've sought a, a lot of information from Todd and from Tim on how do we go about this thing and how do we do it right how have people done it wrong, and how can we not do it that way, right? Um, so I thank them for their efforts. Um, Terry Barnhart is in the back here, um, board member, um, Mrs. Barnhart. Then we have Mr. Miller, um, and then we have Mr. Redinger um, right here in front, Mr. Stickner right off to my right-hand side, all board members, so all, once again, having conversations to say we want to do what's best for our community um, as much as possible. Um, did I miss anybody? Bruce Gephardt um, did not. Tom McFarland, business manager, sitting right in front of me. I looked right over you. Um, so obviously uh, part of that decision. And then also uh, Bruce Gephardt is not able to uh, join us today. Um, for those of you that enjoyed the uh, Bourbon Fun, uh, excuse me, the Bourbon Summer Fest this last weekend, um, saw Bruce scurrying around a lot. So he uh, he took a day off um, the middle of this week, and this has happened to be the day. So. Um, so just a little bit about Triton. You guys see these things. Most of you are connected pretty tightly with the community or you wouldn't be here um, today. Um, so just a couple things. New, world News and World, world Report um, just deemed Triton School Corporation the 31st best um, high school in Indiana. All right, Only behind Penn in our immediate area. So when we're compared to Penn, I think they've set themselves up as a, as a staple in our community. And, we're not satisfied with that. We want to be number one. Uh, but in the end, we're, we're extremely happy with where we've come. Um, highest ranked school in Marshall County, um, in Kosciuszko County, that was reaffirmed um, just this week um, with the niche um, posting of um, talking about a little bit about communities in Marshall County. Um, some of the programs, dual credit classes, we've added vocational classes. Our, um, we have two kids that are actually attending um, the flight school um, in Plymouth um, this year. Um, so we're pretty proud of that and just uh, continue to look at how we can add dual credit courses and continue to prepare our kids for, for their future, whether that's college or career. Um, so Project Lead the Way, something that's near and dear to my heart, NG3, 
um, and Kids Hope USA, and that's just simply providing our kids with mentors, positive character qualities and positive mentor situations to where we can continue to raise young men and young women of character. So memories of the old gym. I just listed some memories, and I'm sure you have your own memories. We're going to go back. Sixth grade magical is a sixth grade teacher. We turned this place into our castle. Um, we cooked a meal. Anybody attended the magical? I see some hands out there, so that's awesome. Just an awesome thing. Um, eventually, we couldn't take three weeks out of our curriculum to prepare for that, so now they go to Schaumburg, Illinois. Um, but in the end, this became our castle. Um, Bourbon Summer League basketball is going to take place tonight, and that's happened in here for, for some time. Sixth grade push carts, uh, first graduation commencement was in 1931 in this gym. Um, elementary and junior high athletics uh, practiced in here a lot. Marshall County Championship in 1940, sectional championship in 43, 50, and 62. Um, 1962 Comets won the sectional title, 56 to 55. Excuse me. 1962 Marshall County Champs. Oh. And oh, sectional champs, Marshall. Ch okay. Sorry about that. So I'll show you where I got my information, <laughs> and it, that was not in there. So, um, because I have them all listed over here with sticky notes in them. So I apologize, right over here, right over here. I know you'll check, I know you'll check. All right, all right, so thank you, thank you. Um, so 1963 uh, corporation team, or excuse me, the corporation team named, name changed uh, to Triton uh, Trojans. At one time the old gym seated 500 spectators, and you can see those seats there. Um, if you look at the seats, they would have had to sit really, really close to each other to get 500. But on this side, there were actually approximately 400 more seats, um, for those of you who may remember that. Uh, we have pride in our past, right? Um, original consolidated, um, we consolidated school in 1917, 1918, and somebody asked, what, are, what does these schools mean? Well, we used to be numbered schools, right? So they were little town schools. So you had school 2, 5, 7, 8, 13, and 14 that consolidated. December 26th in 1928, there was a, a school house fire, or I don't know if you guys are aware of that, but that actually got rid of the old building, essentially, and they had to hurry up and build some side classrooms and so on, and there again, all the information is coming from, um, from the history books. Um, so pretty crazy. All records were salvaged, though, right? So no, not to worry, all the way back to 1904, right? So just some pretty awesome information. Uh, Bourbon High School and grade school began construction in 1928. We're aware of that. Physical training classes were mandated by the state of Indiana in 1928, which is why they needed a gymnasium, right? So you had to have physical education in 1928. 1959, Ernie Watkins um, had forethought, as many of the leaders have that have come through this school corporation, said, you know what, we need to buy the seven acres um, just simply because our school may grow. Um, and guess what? Triton Elementary sits over there, Triton High School sits over there. So thank you, Ernie Watkins, right? Um, seven acres for $20,000, it's in print, it's public record, so I don't think Ernie would be upset, everybody knowing that, right? They already did. Consolidation talks began in 1959. Um, they would no longer give state aid to any school that was less than 120 students. So now they're looking at, if you're under 2,000, they want to consolidate you at times, right? Bourbon High School, 1963, was the last year of the high school building. Um, you can see a lot of these things. Um, the one that I think is interesting, not that I want to be off the hook, but December 18, 19, uh, 1991, the superintendent recommended to the board that they demolish the old gym, and the board voted against it four to five. Four out of five, right? And so it stands. Um, so that was back in 1991. I was 11. So. Um, there's part of me that says four to one vote, excuse me. There's part of me that says, man, I wish they had taken care of that, right? But, but, but obviously, that's just being funny. Um, the Bull, Bourbon Old Gym has served the community for 90 years, um, and I've been heard stated on the, uh, the spotlight that Todd and I um, and Mason did to say, um, if it can serve our kids, our community, for another 90 years, that's great. Um, so we're not opposed to that, which is why we're here today. All right, and that leads us into the Friends of the Old Gym, um, was incorporated in 2014, so this has already been approximately a five-year process. Um, and when I called Todd to say, hey, can you, can you hold, us, hold our hands kind of through this process? And he's like, man, it's about time, essentially. I don't know that you said about time. You said, yeah, okay, all right. You said, you said you're game for anything but a million dollars today, so. Um, so I'm going to have Mason um, come up and talk to you guys a little bit about the Friends of the Old Gym, um, what that, why that was incorporated, why we did that, um, and then uh, we'll continue to move on.
All right, well, first of all, thank you for coming. Um, I think tonight, already here, we have more people than we had at any of the meetings that we've had um, about this building over the last five, six years. I see Chet's nodding his head, so I must be right on that one. I'm, I'm more right than this guy, as usual. Yeah. Um, but we started started having conversations about this building, thinking about this building, what was going to be best for, for the corporation um, financially, and we needed to, to start getting information that would help us make a decision on what was next. And ultimately, that led us to where we are here tonight. But throughout that process, several studies were done, feasibility studies, studies that would tell us how much it would cost to renovate this facility, um, bring it up to code, um, to be able to make a, a banquet center, I think were some of the things that were thrown in that initial um, process. But essentially, it helped us make an informed decision on where we could best put our dollars. We started having uh, public meetings, and we did a few here in this building. We had some over at the high school when we started saying, okay, do we put a million to a million and a half dollars in here, or do we put it into a new building over at the high school? Ultimately, we all know that um, Throughout that time, we gathered the data and that data told us that our best bet was to add something to the high school. So that kind of uh, brought us to where we are today. But the Friends of the Old Gym was just a nonprofit group. There were just a few people that, that cared about this building. Um, Chet was on that group, um, as well as a few other people. And uh, Todd was with us through that. And we, we looked at that and said, okay, what can we do? So we formed that, that nonprofit group and that actually allowed us to rent out the facility um, and make it to where it could be more community, used by the community essentially. Um, throughout that time, we didn't really have anyone that showed a desire to, to rent the facility. We didn't show have anyone that showed a desire to uh, donate a big chunk of money to fix the facility. Um, and all those things ultimately led us to the decision to, to build a new facility over at the high school. Um, so that was kind of the, the process and again, that was, almost six years ago that, that we went through that. So I mean, it's been a long time coming, a lot of conversations, um, a, lot of, a lot of memories and those kind of things. Um, one of the neatest things for me, and, and Jeremy may mention this too, is that um, we had the opportunity to have breakfast with uh, Chet and a group of his guys. Uh, Hal was there, I don't know if Jerry was there. Were you there, Jerry? Um, guys from the, the, those old days that we were talking about. You know, that 62 team, um, and we were able to meet with them at breakfast and have a conversation with them about what this building meant to them, what it meant going forward. Um, and so I guess my thing for, for, that I want to make sure people understand is that a lot of thought is, has been put into this building. And uh, there's always a lot of rumors, a lot of things that are said that maybe aren't always true. And so if you do have questions, uh, I encourage you to contact one of us and we'll be happy to share that with you. I have to share your favorite memory of this building, the okay. one of. You'd prop windows open, right, so you could get in sure. to play basketball, sure. right? <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. So. Secrets, Secrets out. out. Secrets out. Secrets out. That was published in the newspaper. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, we're just kidding. <laughs> Officer asked. Statue of limitations. Over this right. <laughs> All right. So we have pride in our past, and we want to. Definitely make sure that we respect that. We also have faith in our future, guys, and that's why you're all here, right? That's why I'm here. That's why I send my kids here, because I have faith in the people that work here and invest in our kids on a daily basis. Um, so the pictures of our new activity center, um, Triton Activity Center, we've already had, um, and it will serve us in many, many different ways, um, but we've already had basketball camps in there, uh, band. Um, one day it poured during their camp, so they went in and they were able to spread out and do their marching uh, band fun. Um, volleyball's been in there, obviously, et cetera. That's going to continue to grow and grow as that becomes a bigger resource for our community. Um, approximately 375 students per day with just PE classes, those type of things go in there and are using that facility. And I'm excited for what the addition of that facility has done. It's actually allowing us to um, some, make some really good changes to our athletic training room to provide our kids an awesome service, um, a, a film room, so to speak, a storage room. But it's also getting, how many attended Triton High School? or worked at Triton High School, Mr. Wattenberger, um, to make sure we're getting our, our laundry room in a place that's uh, a little bit more safe for our managers and our students. Um, so a lot of great things happening there. Um, so that was completed in April 2019 with a lot of blood, sweat, and tears from our board um, and members of our uh, corporation. Um, so we get to the why. 
Why can Triton School Corporation, or why do we say, you know what, um, we, have to, we have to make a decision? And, and really, um, it comes down to this number, and this number may seem small, um, but as a taxpayer, if we continue to say we're going to spend $10,000 on, on, on something that we're not going to use for the, the remainder of its life, um, I would hope you would come have a conversation with me to say, that doesn't make a lot of sense, Jeremy. Um, and I think people trust um, us for the most part as far as what we're trying to accomplish and we're trying to be um, tight with our dollars and trying to continue to make Triton School Corporation sustainable. Um, but this kind of gives the utility cost of what's happening. That was 2008 actual utility cost. Um, so just for the information of something that we continue to say, if we're not using this facility, can we continue to say if we have two events in here a year that it's worth $5,000 per event? Probably not, right? Um, Indiana Landmarks. Um, Todd Zeiger, once again, as I said, has been an awesome resource through this process. I called him and he was so willing to come and take a look and do a spotlight with us. Um, probably the worst interview he's ever had in his life. No? Okay. Uh, but as you guys saw, just um, to, to kind of kick things off, we wanted everybody to know when this meeting was so they were aware of it. We tried not to do it during farming season. Um, we tried not to do it during planting season or in the middle of winter, right? Um, so instead, we got a beautiful rain shower and it's now it's fine. So, um, so Todd, I'm going to go ahead and ask you to come up and just um, share a little bit about, um, discuss the request for proposal, items and timelines. I actually have all the timelines and all that stuff listed, so you can go off of that. But just maybe recap our conversations and maybe where we're, we're headed with some of those things. Well, I won't uh, talk at you too long. I want to put a face with the name and just to let you know that we're a resource. That been, for those of you who are not aware of Indian Landmarks is, we're a not-for-profit, just like the Friends group, but we just happen to be a little bit bigger. Been in existence since 1960, and our mission is just working with groups, individuals, to save places that are historic or that matter to them in their communities. So we have a long history of working with lots of different buildings, many of which are in much worse condition than this, like can test to some of which I was in today, in that bad of shape. So I think what is positive to me in this one is it's really we're starting from a good place. It needs work. But it's in good shape. You know, the rain shower risk of falling on our heads when we're sitting in here waiting for the meeting tonight. So it's a good, good place to start. So we're a resource. Uh, I've worked through a lot of different types of buildings like this. We helped fund the study from uh, MSKTD that was done a few years ago. And we're looking for some dollars right now to update that to help bring some new dollar, new report uh, information to that. For what does the building need? What sort of costs are associated with that? Um, and so what we're looking for is just working with the school corporation and uh, leadership to help uh, answer questions about old buildings, what might or might not be available, uh, what you can or can't do, and it's mostly what you can do and not very much of what you can't do uh, on this. And just helping to find a new purpose for it, a new life that can make it be for the next 90, 100 years uh, and keep it part of this community. It might not function for the school court, but what could be, what could be used for uh, moving forward uh, that would keep it as part of the community. Uh, looking through the RFP process, you know, how are you going to pay for it? What's your experience in working on old buildings? Uh, what's your vision for that? Uh, we can be a resource to kind of sort that out. Um, but I had to meet with groups or individuals that are interested in looking at the proposal, uh, kind of going forward. So my point tonight, or my preference, is just to put a face with the name. Um, my contact information, I have uh, my business cards over there on the table. I'm not a South Bend, it's not a big deal. You can come down and meet with folks, talk about ideas or different ways that this building can be put, in, put back into service. And probably, most importantly, maybe dispel myths about old buildings and historic buildings that sometimes float around out there about what you can't do to these things and you might be surprised. So maybe help dispel some of those myths over time. Glad to answer questions about that tonight, even if you want. Now or afterwards, uh, I often find the biggest impediment is people's misconceptions about what you can't do to buildings when really, in fact, there's a lot of opportunity around this building, I think, in the future. I just want to be a resource. We want to be a resource to help out really in any way. So that I'll leave it kind of with that. You know, kind of help you walk through the proposal process, answer questions, be a resource, uh, help find the right right reuse. So that's kind of where I'm here at Absolutely. Here tonight. Absolutely. And, and I answer questions and kind of be here as a resource. Really. And our intent behind that, after talking to Mr. Shelley, was just simply we could we could do an overnight um, dem demolition of the building, right? We could as a corporation. And in the end, we're saying, you know what? If, there, if there's a use, if there's a need, if there's a purpose, and if there's a clear vision for what that could look like for our community, then let's explore that, right? And so we're, we're going down that path one more time to say, what could that possibly be? And that's really where Todd has given us some perspective and some insight um, on that side of things, because we're not construction people, we're not landmark people, we're educators. Um, but we're thrown into making these type of decisions. So I think it's been great to work with you and, and to 
have a timeline that isn't just like, okay, turn in in 48 hours or proposal to come up with an idea. So, you know, by next spring, it gives us the winter to kind of work out that. There's a few grants that are going to be due in the next few months, maybe, to look at. But just helping put that plan together between now and in the March, yep. I think that's a realistic time frame. And then if something verbals up, looking at those time frames moving forward. So, yeah. So just know those, those timelines weren't arbitrary. Um, those were in conversation with Todd to say what is realistic, um, what, what's, a, what's a valid valid time frame to make that happen. Okay. Um, next thing is just capital needs um, of improvement, and these are just us being open and honest to say, you know, if we're thinking, we're truly thinking about this, what are, the, what are we getting, right? And there, there again, I said we unlocked all the nooks and crannies of the building today if you want to take a peek at that. Um, but just some of the ones that were mentioned um, back in um, 2014, these are simply pictures from that study. Um, so um, those are there, but you can see um, tuck pointing, that area is actually right above us. Um, if you want to take a peek around the uh, building, masonry repairs, window replacement, estimated costs. And I know there's been a lot of things thrown out there on this one. Um, but these are simply from the, um, the feasibility studies that we have received from two different firms. One of those was the Wythogan study, which I believe was 721. Um, that was in 2014. We all know those costs have risen. So I simply said three quarters of a million dollars. All right. So just so you know where that came from. Um, the other one was about approximately one million. Um, and these were just things that we were thinking we might do if we um, went that route instead of doing the activity center. Um, and after talking to Barton Co. Villama, who's an architect, um, they simply said, you know what, if it was one million then, it's probably 1.3 now. So, so those are rough, but I will tell you all of that information is right over here for your, your uh, viewing pleasure um, after the meeting. Um, so the first document is uh, right here, performance services. As I mentioned, this is a 10-year capital project study. Um, that is located right over here. Um, the other one is the uh, Bourbon uh, Old Gym document. It's just a, uh, oh, you know what, that's actually in the study I just uh, held up. So that's also in the performance service um, proposal or um, feasibility study. The other one is the uh, document uh, that Todd mentioned, okay, and this is the, I believe, was funded by the White Thogan. How do I say that? White Thogan. Okay. White Thogan. Indiana Landmarks funded this for approximately $5,000, I believe, was the cost of that. Um, back when we started that, um, started going down that road in 2014. Um, this document right here is just simply um, letting people know of um, if and when you do something with it, essentially the asbestos work that needs to be done on the building. So we went to the cost of saying, let's make sure we, we figure some of these things out so we can have answers when it comes to that. The next document is, uh, it's the Bourbon High School Chronicle. Okay. You didn't have it in here, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've tabbed where I got my information if you want to take a peek. All right? Amazing. If you guys don't have one of these, Larry Lemler would be more than happy to give you one. All right? He has them located in his historical barn, which is amazing if you haven't seen that. So I had the experience about four weeks ago just to go spend some time with him and learn more about our community. Um, Request the, uh, for proposal. So let's talk a little bit about that. What's the process that we used? Where are we headed? Um, community presentation um, happened. The first community presentation happened in January um, 2017. All of those projects were completed. There were three projects. Those three projects were the HVAC system that had, had never been um, renovated at the elementary school. Um, so new AC, new heat. Um, the new roof that's on the high school right now that was in uh, major need of repair and our beautiful Triton Activity Center. Um, the board retreat discussion on June 21st, we just simply asked Tim Shelley to come, spend some time with us and say, hey, wh what do you think we need to do? How can we go through this in a manner that's gonna um, give our community the, the information they need to make an educated decision on what they would like to do? Um, the process introduced at the board meeting on July 8th, as we stated would happen at the uh, board retreat. Um, we did a spotlight on August 5th. On August 12th, we had a board meeting just to simply re remind people of what's happening and then kind of go through this slide presentation really quick. That, um, there were some other things that were discussed um, during that meeting. Um, and then request for proposal. Um, due March 14th, you can see, excuse me, August 14th, which is us today. Um, and then request for proposal is due March 14th, 2020. The RFP ref uh, review will be concluded uh, by myself and the um, Board of Trustees um, on April 30th of 2020. 
The request for proposal, I know you can't read this, okay? The intent, the intent was not to have you squint, but I have given the request for proposal over on the table, okay? And I think it's important just to kind of review some of the expectations um, and just kind of get those out there in the open. Uh, we are not selling this property. This property is adjacent to our playground. It's, it's the, um, it's the, the um, part of the Triton School Corporation grounds. They're not making more land. Um, we are looking at the possibility of a lease. Um, the things that we would have in there, and these are all spelled out in the RFP, so you can read that. And if you have questions specific to that, we'll be more than happy to answer that. Um, but one of the things is right now, currently, if, if we would ever have, and it's sad we even have to talk about this, if we have an active shooter or some type of something going on in the elementary school and we have kids out on the playground, this right now is our safe refuge for our kids. Um, so if this becomes a, hypothetically, becomes a boys and girls club or it becomes a community center or those type of things, we would simply say how can we as a school corporation um, have some type of memorandum of understanding that if for some reason our kids are in need to get shelter that we could make that happen, okay? Um, so just always looking out for the safety of our kids. Also, it's on our property. Um, so once again, if things, if it, if it doesn't look nice or if we have to have those conversations, that's one of those things that we can continue to say, you know what? If it's not meeting the need of the community, if it's not meeting the need of the school corporation when it comes to, because let's be honest, guys, something is not taken care of. They're probably not going to call you. They're going to call the school to say, why does this look like junk, right? Um, so in the end, that partnership of let's make sure that it's an asset to our community and it, it makes our community proud with how it looks and how it's taken care of. Um, Mr. Shelley. Is there anything that I missed that you feel is important to make sure that we can touch base on? Um, off the top of my head, I would, I would say no, not really. It's great that you're having meetings like this, and I think, I think Todd and you know, Landmarks appreciates you taking the time as opposed to a Friday night demo starting and having it all taken care of by Sunday. So, so I think you know, landmarks preservationists appreciate that. I think your community will ultimately appreciate that. Um, I, the more meetings you can have like this, I think they've done a great job. I think the, the more you can let people know that the, if, if anybody needs information or a tour of the facility, you're available for that. Contact us, absolutely. Everybody needs to understand, no matter how well you do that job, no matter how often you remind people, no matter how often you post on, Facebook or the school website, there's going to be still people in the community right here saying, oh, I didn't realize they were doing that. You know, I never heard anything about that. So I know that's always frustrating to, to school board members, to superintendents, because you do your very best to let everybody know. But there's there's people who just aren't in touch or intentionally blind themselves to efforts like this. So I would encourage you all, as this process goes on, to make sure that your friends and neighbors, community fellow community members, are aware that this process is happening. And if you do, in fact, um, hear somebody say, well, I never, they never say anything about this. What's going on? Why didn't they, they say anything? Kind of politely correct your neighbors, your relatives, and your friend. Remind them, like, yeah, they did, but, you know, like, let's keep moving forward. What can we do on all of this stuff? So, um, I'm not sure if there's anything else that I really can. Um, I think a question that's been asked a couple times, and um, there again, I think we're trying to be an open book about this, and I think if you know me well enough, it's like, let's, let's talk it out. Let's, let's figure it out. Um, people have asked, um, is there something budgeted for the demolition of this facility? Okay? And I will tell you, there is nothing budgeted for the demolition of this facility. All right? Um, so within our capital projects budget, right now there's nothing budgeted for that. I will tell you um, that I've sought information outside of this community as to not create a stir of, guess what, they're going to tear it down um, to the tune of costing $75,000 to do so. Okay, so I've sought that from um, a gentleman that does a lot of that in South Bend, a lot of that for Notre Dame. Um, and he came, he looked at the underground you know, portions of it, what's, what's hiding that I don't know about. Um, and he gave us a quote, a verbal quote, of approximately $75,000. So I think that has been asked in multiple different areas. I don't know if it's going to be asked tonight, but in the end, if, if somebody asked the question, I think we might as well get it out there and, and have that conversation. So, um, so it's one of those things that we will 
have to figure out what we're going to do with the building if we, if we deem that um, a proposal is not up to the standard that we think it could be within the community. But we are definitely open for thoughts. We're definitely open for um, great ideas that can continue to bless, the, uh, bless our community and our kids. So, um, can I say just one more thing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I represent 17 school corporations across the state. I will tell you this. They are, school corporations are not set up to handle building situations like this. They aren't the ones who are capable of preserving a building for a community asset. They know education and know how to run a functioning school building. How to restore and use a building like this, your educators, it, it, it's, just, it's like asking your doctor to do your legal work or vice versa. You, you don't do that. So it's very incumbent upon you as community members, if this is something worth saving for you, you all have to take that step because the money's not there nowadays in public education, the expertise is not there about historic preservation and education, and the time's not there. So if this is something worth your while that you think should be saved, you as a community have to come together. The school will be there and help you where they can, such as tours and information, and directing you to the right contact people, but, but this is this is on you all if you want this bill. Yeah. And to that note, I think there's been a lot of conversations of GoFundMes and sausage and cheese drives. It's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. Um, and so uh, we understand that that's the new wave of how to fund things, um, but in the end, it's, it's bigger than that, um, and it needs to be more sustainable than that. Um, if the parking lot needs fixed and it's being used for said purpose, that becomes the responsibility of said purpose. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So just making sure that we have all those things out there and are having those conversations. And if you have a specific question about that, I'd be glad to open the floor up now with any questions that you have. Um, but uh, any board members that would like to add to what we've talked about? Well, I think one thing that we've been told is should we get to the point where this needs to come down? The people we've talked to said they are going to do everything in their power. Oh, sure to try to preserve as much of this building as they possibly can and make it available to right. patrons in the community. So it's not just a come in, knock it all down, take it to the dump. Right. They want to help with that. They want to preserve, if they possibly can, as much of this building as they can. We were here a little early and a couple, got to talk to a couple people, and I know the scoreboards are coming in, right? The urinals coveted, which is crazy. It just is. It just is. They love it, right? Um, the, the the bar style doors that are yeah. So a good point, Mr. Stickler. That's a good point because in the end we have had that conversation with the gentleman, and he said, you know what? We'll separate it. We'll do what we need to. People are interested in stuff, and we'll do that. And um, I think one of the marks I had on there is when they um, told the elementary town there were 500 people that got numbers for. Um, the auction, or the auction. Um, my wife was one of the one in Mr. McBride's class that took, de not desks probably, I don't know if that was still legal <laughs> or not, but took things over to the new elementary in fifth grade. Um, and so um, she, she went the to the school. What's that? We have the office clocks. Yeah, clocks, right. Right, so what other questions do we have? Any other questions? Do you feel like, hey, you didn't cover this? We do have a demo this now. Um, I, I've spoken to the town about this, um, about the possibility of, for some reason, uh, most likely we're not going to put them, we can't put a bunch of money into this. We build our new activity center, likely we will not spend a bunch of money to build another building. So, um, likely we will have some type of memorandum, memorandum of understanding to um, put a gate at the other side of the, uh, the playground. Yeah, buying this is not, not that is correct. Um, to use the uh, the match at center. So, yep. So. Any other questions? You said if this ever gets used for anything else, it's going to be leased out from the school? Correct. The school. Correct. How do you guys, in terms of a number, that how much you want that lease to cost? How much you want that lease to be? No, in the RFP. Okay. In the RFP, it states the fact is that there's, there's a timeline of when the outside needs to be renovated or at least you need to show capital that you have approximately half a million dollars is kind of where we started on that um, which 
I believe everybody said that was yeah, in the ballpark. I mean, typically, it's kind of like it's a dollar because it's an exchange we're putting right. in okay. a lot um, of money. So I personally, as we approach these, most of the time, it's like you're kind of swapping. Like we're going to put X amount of dollars into this facility, so you're going to get a 50 year lease or something long term. So, yeah, I was talking like after it gets fixed, it would be the you're up and running. That's yeah. the exchange. A dollar, a dollar. Right, it's not a revenue producer. It's not, yeah, we're not it's asking just, yeah. typically yeah. I just common. wondered what that. Really, the agreement is if you're going to make it look awesome, okay. essentially do awesome things. So, right? You're basically, your cost is just fixing it up. That's correct. That's correct. And there's no it's done. That's yeah. like an exchange for fixing up the year long term okay. lease for about a year and, and management of it and keeping it up and all that sort of thing. So, well, that was never discussed. Yeah, yeah. that's in the RFP and that's in all the small print that I wasn't going to read for you. It's all here. The lease arrangement like that makes it easier if for some reason you don't perform, you don't maintain the building, or you start and you end, it makes it easier for the school to come back in and say, okay, you're not doing what you're supposed to, we're taking the building back and we're going to do what we have to do with it at that point, as opposed to an outright sale. Outright sale makes it much more difficult for us to reclaim the building if you default on your obligations. Yep. Good question. Yeah. So that is in the RFP and if you go through that and, and read that and you have any questions at all, um, the intent is not to, to hide that. Obviously it's on the screen and I shared the PowerPoint with you. Um, but if you have specific questions on that, if I don't know the answer, I definitely have the resources to, um, to ask those questions and, and get those. So good question. Thank you for bringing that up. Most so. grants that are available, there's not a lot of them, but are, you can do those for the long term. So okay. it doesn't include doing those sorts of things. You have to have site control for an extended period of time. Okay. We've dealt with that, so that's okay. If anybody's thinking about that, well, you can't get you know, fundraising or that, but you have site control for whatever that long term is. Or you can do that. Okay. Right. Good question. Any other questions? Jeremy? Yes, sir. Uh, you said the estimate on demolition is around 75000 That is correct. Does that include the cost of uh, asbestos removal? Or no, that does not. About how much that What? Uh, how much does that cost? Yeah. That, that's a great question. I, I don't know that. Um, they just simply said what needs to be taken out. So what they did is they assessed that. And then essentially we have to get a third party to come in and actually complete that work. Um, I want to say they estimated in between three and five thousand dollars, but don't quote me on that. So it's um, not a significant amount. Right. It's all just like the crawl space below here, which really we use you can leave it down there. That is not right. right. There's some of them in the corner or one of the patches that's minor. So the only piece of that is if you actually demolish the wood you have. Right. You can leave it by right. not disturbing it. Right. You can just sit down there, it doesn't matter. So it, it partly reuse it just you know, it's not disturbing. It's not a big deal. Right. Are you going to have to repair the floor? I think that's that's. Do you play basketball? I don't. It's up to the user. Right. That would be up to the RFP and yeah. You obviously don't think it is. Don't think it is. I coached it. As I said, there's definitely numerous people in there. Sure. I don't know which sure. is which. Yeah. Yeah. But in the end, that's that's where that person that is willing to invest and put the time and effort into it would would make that a priority. Any other questions? All right. If there's two competing proposals that are equal, are they not challenging those for basketball games? <laughs> I think we'll probably do uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's the one with the two? Course? Okay, course. <laughs>
Well, knockout. Knockout. Spelled bourbon gin. Yeah. Any other questions? Any other questions? All right. Thank you guys so much. Um, we do have some basketball players here that are ready to play, but feel free to look around um, if you would like to do so. If anybody wants to take me up in the offer to look at the activity center, I will try to be over there at 7 o'clock to take you on a little tour if you're interested. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'm just basing on what we've done in the past. Uh, I mean, yeah. I'm